One of the main uses of the principles of natural language processing is what is called chatbot or chatterbot. Actually, the term chatterbot was originally coined by Michael Molding, the creator of this verb bot, Julia, in 1994 to describe these conversational programs. A chatterbot is a computer program designed to simulate a conversation with human users. The primary aim is to kind of fool the user into thinking that he actually talks with a human. This is what we have already referred to Turing test. This new criterion of intelligence soon became a challenge to several specialists that created all kinds of chatbots until today. The first chatbot was Eliza and she was built by Joseph Wisdom. She was released to the public in 1966 and she played the role of a psychotherapist. Eliza would simply rearrange a submitted statement or question into a new question to ask the person talking to her. Eliza's key method of operation, which is now used by all chatbots, involves the recognition of keywords or phrases in the input that are previously categorized to positive or negative structures. That way, she's creating an illusion of perfect understanding in most cases. At her time, people would actually use Eliza to confide in. This is a conversation we made with Eliza, and as you can see, you can ask her something and answers you back most of the times with a question. If you repeat yourself, she will probably answer you with the same way, so it is clear that she matches words in order to answer. Pali was next, designed by Kenneth Colby 1971. His purpose was to reflect the mind of a seriously paranoid mental patient. To achieve that, a database would be created with positive or negative values to certain words or phrases to act as triggers for various emotions. Both Parry and Eliza were successful in playing their roles since professional psychologists were having difficulty to find out that they were actually talking with the software. These chatbots are not self-learning artificial intelligence in any way because their creators spend a lot of time constructing a fully edited database with works and meanings. This method is used until now, but with some differences. Now they're also using the bot's input and output in order to analyze that and find out what is commonly used and what isn't. So moving on in our timeline, we find Jabberwaggy, a kind of different chatbot which claims that he can learn. It was created in 1988 by Rollo Carpenter and brought online in 1997. The general AI of Jabberwaggy stores everything everyone has ever said and finds the most appropriate thing to say using contextual pattern matching techniques. In its website, claims that it can be taught slang English, word games, jokes, etc., and that everyone can contribute to its learning. They are comparing Jabberwaggy with a conversational Wikipedia. And as you can see, we have made a conversation with Jabberwaggy as well. One of the most famous chatbots is Alice. She was created by Dr. Richard Wallace in 1995 using his own IML markup language. Alice has a structure as Eliza and Parry when it comes to creation. They use human edited database for their responses. But Alice was not created for a purpose but to demonstrate a woman that you can make conversation with. And this is a huge project since Alice would have to respond to all kinds of questions and subjects but she's considered a strong competitor. There is a long list of chatterbots that can be used in different ways in industries. These days, a lot of companies all over the world choose to use chatbots in order to guide their website users or answer their clients' questions. There are chatbots that will answer questions about sports, animals, and electronics. Others can give you ideas about fashion or cooking. There are chatbots that have been used by several governments in financial purposes, and yes, there are erotic chatbots that can answer to all sorts of questions. Of course, you have to be an adult. All of these chatbots work for several organizations in order to make things easier with information and to guide clients or users through services. They exist to the internet and maybe you have someday used one and haven't noticed. Chatbots are often divided by their appearance, perception, and expressions. So there are faceless chatbots, robots, 
avatars and animated avatars and several search boxes. Some can recognize text, others can recognize speech and respond with speech as these examples. My name is Meg. What's your name? Nice to meet you, Panetta. Are you male or female? I'm happy to meet another female. How old are you? Okay. I am 18 years old. What's new? Can you help me with my Shakespeare research? I'll certainly try. So when was Hamlet written? There is not a simple answer. Sources disagree, but consensus is that it was written between 1599 and 1601. Was it based on a real person? Scholars think that it is probably based on the Scandinavian legend of Hamlet. Who are the main characters? Let's see, that would include Hamlet, Claudius, Ophelia, and Gertrude. And others can recognize gestures and make facial expressions. For example, this Polish chatbot, where we asked her if she knows English, and she nodded her head saying no. Some chatbots can be used for one application only, and they are created for one purpose. Maybe e-learning, maybe gaming, navigation through a website, answering questions for a shop's product, or just entertainment. There are actually some amazing chatbots that offer a lot of different features to their users and a lot of help through their everyday life. One of these complex and exciting applications is Siri, which stands for Speech Interpretation and Recognition Interface and was founded in 2007 by Doug Kitlaus, Adam Traeger, Tom Gruber and Norman Winerski. Siri is an intelligent personal assistant and also a knowledge navigator, which works as an application for a certain mobile operating system. Siri uses natural language user interface to understand the comments of the user. Combining other applications that the mobile offers and the amazing understanding of natural language, she is able to answer questions, make recommendations, and perform actions by delegating requests to a set of web services. Now, let's have some fun with the famous character Rush from Bing Bang Theory series using Siri in a humorous way. Hello? Hello. <laughs> How about a cup of coffee? I found six coffee shops. Three of them are fairly close to you. I will see you gentlemen later. <laughs> what are you doing right now? What am I doing? I'm talking with you. You have a beautiful voice. Thank you. It's nice to be appreciated. I bet it is. My name is Rajesh, but you can call me Raj. Would you like me to call you Raj? I'd like you to call me sexy. <laughs> From now on, I'll call you sexy, okay? Siri, play some smooth jazz. Playing smooth jazz. <laughs> oh my god. Despite the greatness of chatbots and this kind of applications, the expanding of technology inspires some minds in order to use it maliciously. Those chatbots are frequently used to fill chat rooms with spam and advertising or to make people reveal personal information such as bank accounts, numbers and passwords. So there must be a great caution when using one and be careful if something is suspicious when we talk to someone by instant messaging. 
So maybe chatbots seem to be just luxury today since they perform commands that we could perform on our own and also they may not respond always as appropriate as a person would do. We must not forget though that their main purpose of creation is to serve clients and users as well as inform them and help them throughout their everyday tasks. So maybe chatbots are not fully included in our daily life yet, but who knows? Maybe one day we will not be able to resist the help of a chatbot or should we say a new friend. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Okay, you all have a nice day now. I always wanted to say that. Goodbye.